Almost every writer I've ever met has a different path to becoming a published author, often starting out in life doing something completely different. Tosca Lee started out in life wanting to be a ballet dancer. Then when she was at college, she realized that she really wanted to be a writer. And she had a father who had the foresight to believe in her and supported her financially, paying her what she would have got paid doing a, an ordinary job to enable her to write her first novel. And that foresight really turned out well. 10 novels later, 17 languages, international bestseller. She is a terrific writer. Her latest, The Line Between, is a great book. My favorite writing tip is to write as though no one will ever read this. And I know that sounds contradictory, especially if you're hoping to get published. But the reason I say that is because when you go and you write in, in secret, like you're writing in the dark in your closet or something, that is when you are going to write your most authentic and bold stuff. You're not worried about your, your parents or uh, people in your neighborhood or what anybody else is going to think. And so you are laying down some really authentic, wonderful stuff. And you can go back and edit and censor it later. But for now, at the beginning, I always say, write like no one will ever read this. This is a tough question. It's like asking a parent which book, which child is their favorite child. So, um, but I can tell you that anytime I'm working on a book, it just happens that I get all these ideas for next books and next ideas. And that is always my favorite book, the one that I, I'm looking forward to starting because I haven't gotten in there and made a big mess of it yet. So my favorite book is always the one that is next to come. I am one of those people that um, will read the back cover and then immediately I flip to the front and I read the first sentence. And if I like the first sentence, then I'll read the first paragraph. And if that has hooked me, then I have a pretty good idea that I am probably going to like it, or at least I'm willing to take the adventure and see. So, but first line, first paragraph. I have an office in my home that is the place. And that's where my desk is, that's where everything's all set up. I've got my special keyboard and everything. Um, I've got my special desk chair, it's very ergonomic. I also write in the attic of the farmhouse um, where I live part of the time. So my husband is a farmer and so I write up in the attic there with a wonderful view of the countryside. So that's where I write. When I was young, uh, I remember reading Lord Valentine's Castle. It was a sci-fi kind of fantasy book. And I also loved The Mists of Avalon and Clan of the Cave Bear. And I read voraciously. I read all kinds of books, but those are the ones that always stand out to me as the kinds of adventures that were hard for me to leave behind when I close the last page. You know what I mean? When you leave a storybook world and you're just not ready to to rejoin this world or to leave that one behind. So those are the ones that really inspired me at a young age. That said, I didn't know really that I wanted to be a writer until much later, so. Well, I love stories, obviously. Um, I, I think that's why my guilty pleasure is TV and movies, preferably with food in hand. So I like to eat and watch stuff so the answer to this is no. I wanted to be a ballerina and I got an injury when I was 14. Uh, I tore a groin muscle and that was really hard to come back from. It took a long time and so um, by the time that happened and I grew quite a lot, I figured out that this was probably not going to happen for me. So um, it was my freshman year in college and I was home for spring break. I don't know who goes home to Nebraska over spring break, but that's what I did. And I was riding in a car with my dad and I was talking about how great books are like roller coasters. They've got twists and turns and um, you know, things you don't always see coming and your stomach drops out part of the time. And I remember just blurting out to my dad, I think I'd like to write a book. 
and I hadn't really, I mean, I, and it's so weird because I had been writing before and I used to win contests even as a kid and stuff, but I never really thought of it as a thing. And that day my dad said to me, look, I will make you a deal. He said, I will pay you what you would have made this summer working at the bank, which is what I was supposed to do that coming summer. I had this job lined up. Um, he said, I will pay you what you would have made working at the bank if you spend your summer writing your first novel and you do it full time. You treat it like a job. And so that's what I did. I wrote my first novel that summer. Um, it is still in a crate in my basement. It's not very good, but you know, that's how you learn to write novels by writing a novel. So you learn by doing. This is a really good question and different authors do different things. And if you're interested in writing a novel, the most important thing is to figure out what works best for you. For me, uh, I do all my research first because I find that my research informs the writing. And I also have learned by experience that I have to have some kind of an outline. So it may not be as thorough of an outline as, as some authors. Some authors are extremely thorough. Um, but I need to at least know where the story is going. That said, I like to leave a little wiggle room for mystery because it just never fails. Whenever I get into the writing of a story, unexpected things happen and that's part of the fun of it. So um, I leave a little room and I'm willing to adjust course as necessary. Yes. Ah! That is the worst thing ever. I haven't lost a whole novel or anything like that, but I have lost um, maybe you know, like chunks of 10 pages at a time. So uh, that's horrible. I would always say have some kind of backup thing. I've got Time Machine on my Mac, but you know, it only does snapshots every now and then. Um, yes, I have. Thank you, not very much word for Mac. I find that what readers take away depends a lot on what they are bringing to the story. So what's going on with them and you know what is it that they came to the story hoping to find. That said, I always hope that readers have taken away an enjoyable time and that they've been thoroughly entertained and hopefully maybe lost a little sleep along the way. I consider it a personal badge of honor when I've kept readers up too late or phoning in to work to, you know, that they can't come in or something or missing school. I don't advocate that, don't miss school. I'm just saying that I always kind of cheer a little bit when I hear that's happened. So I, I'm here to entertain, that's my job. I turn to my husband who is wonderful at brainstorming, but I also have a um, great group of trusted friends and editors that I know I can turn to when I really get stuck. So um, if you are a new writer and you're you know, finding your way, a really important part of the process is to find your people. So make sure you're surrounding yourself with the people you need. And that includes these trusted friends that will take the journey with you and who will be there to help you figure your way out when you've written yourself into a pickle. Let me tell you, my most recent book is called The Line Between. It is a thriller. It's the story of a 22-year-old young woman named Winter Roth, who has recently been kicked out of a doomsday cult in, on the American prairie. And she's trying to start over in an outside world that she's been taught to regard as evil. And right at this time, a pandemic has begun uh, to spread across the US. And so for her, um, it seems like the apocalypse that she's always been told was coming. So if you like thrills, if you like to be kept up reading far too late into the night, please consider checking that one out. Um, I've, I've been told it's a fun read, but you know, I, I'm biased. I thought it was fun. Um, the sequel is coming out in September and I had so much fun writing it. So I would love it if you would, um, Check that book out, uh, The Line Between and A Single Light. Thanks so much, Tosca. You are an inspiration to all budding authors.